The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. This is the largest cypress swamp in the United States, folks. Hi, everybody, I'm Keith Warren, and welcome to Deer and Wildlife Stories, where today we're in the Everglades of Florida at Big Cypress Whitetails. I've been to a lot of places where whitetail deer live, but I've never been to a place that has as harsh a conditions as exist right here in the Everglades. Hi, I'm Rich Cannon, owner of Big Cypress Whitetails. Uh, we're right smack in the middle of the Everglades, probably the way deep down South Florida. Um, I got into deer breeding about two years ago, and the reason I got into it because I wanted to grow, you know, a little bit bigger deer than what we have this far south in the middle of the Everglades. I think a big trophy here is 115, and, and my goal is if I can get to 200 inches, I would be really happy. Um, that's one of the reasons why I went to Texas Genetics. They can survive in this heat, they're hardier, um, I think they compete with all the harsh environment we got here. You know, there's lots of good charities out there, and, and I'm involved with a lot of them, but there's only one, like the Outdoor Adventure Foundation. You know, most people watching have probably heard of Make-A-Wish Foundation, and I hope you have, because that's a good organization too, but years ago they started making it where it was tough, where they would not grant wishes to take kids hunting, and I thought that was wrong. And all of a sudden that's where the Outdoor Adventure Foundation comes in. The Outdoor Adventure Foundation takes kids hunting, and takes kids fishing, and, and takes uh, wounded warriors and people that are really, they have life-threatening illnesses and people that need the therapy that the outdoors provides. And so when Make-A-Wish wouldn't take care of people that I thought needed to be taken care of, and the Outdoor Adventure Foundation stood up, I started supporting the Outdoor Adventure Foundation. I'm Britt Cornwell with the Texas Outdoor Adventure Foundation. We supply hunting and fishing trips for young adults and children under the age of 25 with life-threatening illnesses as well as combat disabled veterans. Most of our hunts we have right there in the state of Texas, but on this one we brought Lindsey Meyer from just outside of Houston to Florida to Maurice Kayon's ranch. Lindsey Meyer is my daughter. Um, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor back in 2012. She had the radiation and chemo. She's in remission right now. She has shown many people how blessed we are every day to be able to live the way we can and fight through little struggle, struggles and big struggles. She just impresses me so much. I'm at this point in my life where I'm very blessed to be where I'm at and um, you know, I want to use the ranch to be able to give back. And I met a wonderful young lady by the name of Lindsay to the Outdoor Adventure Foundation and we're happy to have her out this weekend. Uh, the hunter that we're going to be going out with today, uh, she's a sweetheart. Lindsay is from Texas and she came all the way over here with Britt and the guys from the Texas Outdoor Adventure Foundation. And she's never shot a crossbow before. Uh, Lindsay has had brain cancer and she is a survivor. She's currently in remission. She's got cute little dimples and beautiful blue eyes and blonde hair and a smile. Well, she just never stops smiling. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. So it's early August in Florida and you can imagine what the weather's like. It's hot 
And when I tell you that deer season opens up the 1st of August around here, you think, what? Yep, and the deer are in the rut, folks. I mean, early August and the deer in the rut, I've never been here and experienced something like that. So uh, I couldn't wait to sit in the stand with Lindsay, but the first thing was to get her, uh, well, get her to where she could shoot a crossbow, and I was confident that she could shoot it. And boy, that little girl did a good job. Are you right-handed? Yes. Okay, good. Get up where you're on the chair here. There you go. Good, on your knees, just like that. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put an arrow in it. And your finger is perfect where it is. You don't wanna touch that trigger just yet. I'll tell you when you can squeeze the trigger. Look at that. Yeah. You're fine. Baby, that is awesome. That is awesome. Mm. Oh, perfect, perfect. Look at that camera and tell them what you just did. I just shot a Florida deer. <laughs> <laughs> she sure did. Give me a hug. Okay, this was a long time coming, I'm telling you what. Mo, get over here. Get over here, okay? Come on, Aaron. We are in a great big stand, folks, and we're at Big Cypress Whitetails, and we have a special hunter with us right here. And she is an amazing young woman, and she is an amazing shot. And I'm jealous because I've never killed a Florida deer before, and I think that's pretty doggone cool. So, yep, well, good job. Let's uh, let's go downstairs and see what we got. <laughs> All right. Now you got to smile and show those dimples off. <laughs> So what do you think? It's big. It is big. And tell everybody about shoot a crossbow. Was it hard? No, it was just like sending a regular rifle. I mean, it really is. It's pretty cool. A crossbow is a wonderful thing. And in Florida, crossbows are legal in archery season. And I want, I want to tell you all something. This guy right here, Maurice, he is absolutely, he, he is a prince of a man. Um, he's, he's a good example for other men to follow. You really are. And, uh, he, is a, he is a friend of the deer industry, he is a, a deer enthusiast, he's a deer farmer, he's a rancher, got a lot of property down here in South Florida, and uh, out of the goodness of his heart, he has opened up to the Outdoor Adventure Foundation for us to, to get Lindsay over here. And so, you did a good job, baby, and uh, Maurice, thank you. Thank you. And look at these dimples. Now smile. Look at those dimples. Isn't that cute? <laughs> 
Seeing Lindsay take the deer in such a, well, such a professional manner, that made me realize, you know what, Lindsay, like most people that uh, have gone through life-threatening illnesses like that, they mature real quickly, and Lindsay is way mature beyond her years. It wasn't about the kill for her, it was about just coming and, and having an outdoor adventure. And so I just got to be a part of that adventure, and I love being a part of it, and I appreciate the guys at the Outdoor Adventure Foundation for bringing her out here, but I really appreciate the KM family for hosting us. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. On the outside of the pens there's predator wire which keeps uh, all the animals that want to get in out. But take a look at this, on the shade cloth right here and above it you've got razor wire. And then above that you've actually got a hot electric wire. But I want to show you this, if you come down here below you'll take a look on the side of the shade cloth where something whether it was a panther or a black bear, actually crawled up the outside, right here up the shade cloth, trying to get in. As soon as they hit the razor wire and the hot wire, they took off. So the deer down here have to be extremely hardy. So who are these guys? These are all my yearling bucks. I've got four two-year-olds, so mainly I've been at this for just basically two years. So you'll see the crop on this this pen here. Wow. Okay. Well, that that one deer is not a two-year-old or a one-year-old. There's one big one right there. Who's he? Yeah, he's a Fuchsia 140. He's my five-year-old. Basically, I bought him maybe about three years ago, and that's when I, a lot of these yearling bucks and the two-year-olds are from him. Okay. So that's your that's your breeder buck, basically. Yes. Okay. Five-year-old. Is that the one that's got a wound brother that was a that was premature? They had to pull in the bottle race. Yeah, he's a wound brother to Peanut. Okay. You can see he's okay. a lot smaller. He's got a good you know good frame on him, but mm -hmm. rack wise he's not what we want. But he's basically our mascot. We're going to keep him as a pet. Right. Okay. But the but the rest of them are basically siblings out of him then. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Well, that's cool. The thing I like about it, you know, the the these deer, uh, they have to be hardy deer in order to be able to survive down here. And I'm looking at them going, y'all just can't imagine. How harsh environment this is. We got bugs. There's, there's, uh, you know, panthers down here. The mountain lions, uh, bears, alligators. Coyotes. There's all coyotes, bobcats, all kinds of critters. And I mean, you look at the pens, and they're surrounded by this, by the, by the wire and a hot wire and all. And I mean, this is harsh environment for these deer to live in. The bugs are just unbelievable. But this strain of deer that you're raising is not a northern strain of deer like a lot of people have actually brought down south. Tell them what this strain of deer is and why you have it. Well, basically, I was bringing a lot of northern deer. They were dying off of me. I mean, I couldn't get them to survive in this environment or let them go into soft releases and preserve. So I was told to, you know, bring in the Texas genetics. And the Texas have done amazing. You know, I mean, you get one every now and then, they get sick for a specific reason. But I mean, overall, I think in the three years of uh, they've been here, maybe two of them, three of them have died just through either diarrhea or something else, but not because of the, either the bugs or the blue tongue or whatever else that could be. Than this far south. You know, the, the deer have really evolved. I mean, we have different subspecies of deer, whether it's deer in, in the coastal regions and swampy regions like this or up in the north woods. I mean, there are different subspecies of deer, and their bodies have adapted to be able to live in those conditions. I mean, you take a look at these deer across the board. I mean, the, these deer, body wise, are not near as big as the deer up north. They just aren't, okay? It is hot down here, and these deer have to survive in real rough conditions. But the, the deer, take a look at them. They're real reddish color, so I'll tell you what, they're beautiful. I like the, I like the shape of them all. I want to see some, I mean, they're talking, everybody's talking about how pretty your yearling bucks are. Can, that you've got a pen with yearlings in it. Take me to that, okay? Okay. All right, good. Okay, let's go. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy.
All right, so who are these guys? Oh my gosh, you're beautiful. These are all my yearling bucks. These are the bucks that we've been really working at with the, we're trying to get the typical frame and you know, the width and uh, so I'm really happy with these deer right here. Oh man, take a look at that folks. The, the, the interesting thing about this, we talked about these deer needing to be hardy for this environment in which they live and these are Texas blood deer and it's just so they can live in these conditions but take a look at it. The body are not near as big as northern deer. Uh, I, I notice the thing about them, they're real reddish in color. I know that the, the hooves, if we were to get up close to the hooves are different. The, these deer right here have really evolved into, they had to evolve to live in this kind of condition. But the thing is, he, we mentioned Texas deer. These deer came from Texas, or originally from Texas. The Florida borders are closed now. Mm -hmm. And Marie started before the borders closed. So, so he, and he dealt with a guy, Mike Mansfield. Okay, Mike Mike's Mansfield. A, a mutual friend of ours. And he's a wonderful guy. And, and, and uh, he, he had deer from Texas. And so the guys that got in the deer farming industry from Florida early on were able to get deer from out of state because since the border is closed down. So these deer were tested to make sure they were healthy, they were brought in, and obviously they're healthy because their offspring is alive and well. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, that sets y'all up for, for the future, for these deer right here are gonna be more healthy when they're finally released out to live the rest of their life out in the wild. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the game plan, that's exactly what we wanna do. I wanna be able to, to raise deer that can survive in this environment. And that's what the goal is. I think we're, we're working towards it. I mean, they're, they're beautiful as well. I mean, a lot of the places that I go to, they raise their deer up really to sell them to other deer farms. I mean, that's, that's their goal. Tell them what your goal really is. My goal is, I mean, I want, you know, I know you got to grow a big deer in a pen, so when you release them, he's going to lose some inches, but if I can grow a, an average 200 inch deer that's going to grow in the wild, in the preserve, on its own, you know, without the protein pellets, just in, in this natural environment, then I think I've hit my goal, and that's, that's what I'm really striving for, mainframe, typical, you know, hardy deer, uh, when he walks out, I mean, you, you can't just say, but wow, I want to have that deer. And, and as yearlings, every one of these yearlings I look at, every one of them is beautiful. And every one of them, you can, you can just look at it and you say, in two or three years, when they walk out, you'll get that wow. Oh, yeah. And all I can say is, job well done. Thank you. Man, that's some kind of beautiful. I don't care what you have going on in your life when you think you have troubles, okay? But uh, one thing that always roots me when I have troubles as I look back at the people that I get to hang out with on a regular basis, I look at people like Lindsay or Nick and, and, and people that, that, that really do have troubles and all of a sudden my troubles seem, well, seem minor. And so I, I look at it and I think there, there are special people out there, not just like Lindsay or, or Nick or, or their family, but special people that, that realize the special needs of those special people and like Maurice and his wife Rosie and all the people with the Outdoor Adventure Foundation and the people out there with giant hearts that give back. And so coming to a, a place outdoors that I've never been to before and being able to experience it and, and look at all the, all the pretty sights and, and be able to take this in with, with complete strangers. I haven't met these people before. And be able to, at the end, they're friends and hugging them. And, and there's something that the white-tailed deer brings us all together. And I don't care what color you are, I don't care how old you are. I don't care where you live. If the white-tailed deer, if, if you love the white-tailed deer, the odds are, uh, I tell everybody, we probably have more in common than not in common. And so I think it's cool that the white-tailed deer really has brought us all together here. And for me, that makes, uh, that just makes it special. I'd like to thank Maurice and Rosie Cayen for having us out today as well as the Outdoor Adventure Foundation for doing everything they're doing for people that are in need. And a big thanks to y'all for watching. Now, if you have any questions or comments about the show, I'd love to hear from you. I'm Keith Warren, and I'll see you next week right here on Deer and Wildlife Stories.